off camber corner, just get on the gas and it pulls you around like that into fourth little pot and it just digs in, it's incredible. and welcome to this Volks Wizard video or maybe it should be Ola because I'm pleased to welcome to the channel our very first Seat and it's not just any old Seat I always thought first car would be a Leon Cupra but actually we've gone one better or actually quite a lot better with this it's a Leon Cupra R now that one letter does make a big difference because this is a very rare car just 24 came to the UK according to the plaque down here 799 were made in in total and basically what you've got is a very well equipped Leon Cupra but with a 310 horsepower engine from the Club Sport S or the Golf R still running two-wheel drive and we've only got a manual gearbox as well so yeah a very intriguing proposition for somebody like me who used to own a Golf GTI Club Sport S now the reason this is intriguing to me is because I always found the Club Sport S a little bit too hardcore I couldn't really justify taking such a precious car on track I had my edition 30 project car at the time anyway which was perfect for thrashing the crap out of um, but on the road going out with my wife say it was a little bit too noisy and I couldn't take my parents out in it because it had no back seats it was missing bits of equipment that made it actually quite hard to live with even on the few occasions that I did drive it putting it in the garage which it had to live in it had no parking sensors so that was always a bit risky it had no adaptive cruise control which you tend to get used to in fact it had no cruise control well this car covers all those bases it gives you everything it even gives you the back doors and it's you know it's got everything you could really expect you haven't got a sunroof you can't order a sunroof in fact the only option you could order on this car was one that I applaud and that is Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres for 895 quid but I think the best thing to do is get the car with the standard tyres on it and then go and get yourself some track dedicated wheels and tyres because you don't really want to drive this car on the road on cut tyres and you don't want to drive it on the track on road tyres so just do the sensible thing and have both sets and the cheapest way to do that is to buy them separately so yes this is a brilliant package does it lose that dynamically to the club sport s well i'm not so sure it's a little bit heavier because it's uh, so well equipped and it's got all the other bits that are missing it's 95 kilograms but i honestly don't think you can tell that so let's just pop it into second and probably a little bit twisty here too to do the acceleration but it doesn't feel like a heavy car it's so lovely to position we've got adaptive dampers We've got drive for select mode, so like a lot of cars, you can change the modes. Humorously, in this car, we haven't got a normal mode. We've only got comfort, which isn't actually that comfortable. We've got sports, we've got Cupra, an individual where you can pick a mix, which is what we're using right now. So we've got the dampers in sports, because Cupra's a little bit too hard. We've got the steering in sports because it's a little bit too heavy in Cupra for the road, but everything else is hardcore, so diff and engine response is properly hardcore, and it is a bloody hardcore car. It does remind me a lot of the Club Sport S. It's slightly less enthusiastic, but it's still an insanely fast and responsive car, and I think the compromises for all the equipment and the comfort and the usability are worth it because this is a daily usable car but it's still incredibly fast and then there are the brakes 370 millimeter discs with four pot brembos which are absolutely incredible as i will demonstrate now oh blimey i'm gonna say i feel a bit peculiar they are easily the best brakes 
I've ever had on a road car. They might be the same brakes as those on, say, the RS3, but the RS3 is quite a bit heavier, so they are incredible. And I think much better than the ones on the Club Sport S because they're bigger and they may last longer on track. I always thought of the Club Sport S as a car designed to stay on track for seven minutes, 49 seconds, and no more. It's not really a car you can slog along on a track day um, all day, as Simon Harper, who was a contributor to Volkswagen Driver, found out. He had to replace the brakes and the clutch on his car after just an Evo track evening. Anyway, I've done a bit of dynamic driving in this car on a particular road. It's very hard to demonstrate its capabilities in full because it's just so capable, but we'll cut to that now. Okay, we're on my little test road. I don't actually film on this one that much, but I do drive it a lot because it's the good link between my home and the motorway. And uh, we're in individual mode, so everything's hardcore apart from the dampers and the steering, which are backed off to sport. So that's in fourth gear, loads of torque. You don't really need to rev it, but it does like to rev into third. Bit hard on that bump there, but it just fires itself out of that corner amazingly, and it's popping on the on the overrun a treat. It just feels so alive, these cars. You can just about feel them struggling with the traction, just a little bit of slip, but not enough to wake up the traction control. And the VAQ diff intervenes, and it just tugs you around that corner. makes it feel so much smaller. It's such an exciting car to drive. Oh, and the brakes. Four pop Brembo's, can you beat them? And this is a light car and we've got brakes that are, you know, well above what a manufacturer would deem acceptable on this type of car. So let's try and do that again, just to get a better feel for the car. So I say we're in individual mode and it's a really good balance. So that's fourth gear. We'll just use the torque, I think, this time. A couple of cyclists we need to be aware of. It's quite a narrow road, so you have to be aware of lorries coming at you on the wrong side of the road. But this doesn't feel like a big car, even though it's not particularly small. Gear shift is beautiful. That Alcantara knob feels great. It just slots into gear really precisely. You can flick it about the box, no problem. Into fourth. I think we're popping third over this crest. And there's a bit of deflection, a bit of torque steer when you get on the gas a little bit, but it just makes it so much more exciting. Off camber corner, just get on the gas and it pulls you around like that. Into fourth, little pop. And it just digs in. It's incredible. Oh, wow. Well, I think we better go back to base now and just have a little, let my heart rate come down and just have a tour of this car inside and out. Right then, my hands have stopped shaking enough to hold a camera, so I can now give you a tour of this Leon Cupra R. Before I do that, I'd just like to say this car is currently for sale at volkswizard.co.uk for just under £30,000. So if you want more information, go to volkswizard.co.uk, link in the description below. Okay, there are three colours available for the Leon Cupra R. You get a black, you get this grey, and you get a matte grey. I can't remember if the matte grey was extra cost option, but it's in a lot of the footage which I can put on the screen now. But this is a nice glossy grey. The translated version of the name is Pyrenees grey, but the Spanish version sounds like a bit of your body that you never really get to see. If you know what that is, put it in the comments below. A little puzzle for you. Okay, so... It's a beautiful car, this, and it really does tickle my fancy, to coin a phrase. I'm not so sure about the copper bits, but in reality, looking at them all together, they actually work okay. But the carbon fibre is just exquisite. Tom, the previous owner, said it, this was made for Seat by Koenigsegg. I haven't been able to confirm that, but the quality of it is much better than you'd expect of a mass-produced car. Just like the Club Sport S, we've got, we've got aerodynamics that actually works, and that goes through to the wheel arch. Like comes out there, just like on the Club Sport S. Unlike the Club Sport S, so we've got these massive brake diff and calipers. I don't know if you can see there, but there's an Audi logo, and I'm pretty sure these are RS3 spec. Um, I'm not sure if they're wavy on the RS3, but they're 370mm up from the Cupra standard 340mm. And we've got these beautiful Brembo four pots calipers. I think Seat are the only brand in the group that actually use Brembo branded calipers. I think Brembo make them for Audi RS, but they never use a brand. So yeah, these were optional extra, I think, on Cooper's 
and part of the Sub 8 pack on the car that set the ring record. Because let's not forget, the Leon Cupra is a ring record car. The Cupra Sub 8 did the ring record a bit slower than the Club Sport S a few years ago. Uh, the driver then was Jordi Genet, who's like a Seat factory driver. He did a lot of the TCR driving when TCR started. And a little point of trivia is that Seat make all the TCR cars for the Volkswagen Group. So if it's a Volkswagen, if it's a Volkswagen Golf GTI TCR, the racing car that is, if it's an Audi RS3 LMS, it's made by Seat at Martorell. And these bits here are a tribute to this, the TCR racing cars because they've all got a much wider track. But the track on this car is also a bit wider than the standard as well, which means that it just feels a lot more stable in corners. It's also got revised geometry, so there's more negative camber at the back, apparently two degrees negative at the back and two degrees negative at the front. And while they can probably adjust it with the normal hardware at the back to give you the negative camber, at the front they've had to fit revised suspension uprights because you can't adjust them on these cars to that degree. And it's really important to have negative camber because it gives you much better stability in corners, much better grip as well. So when the car's loaded up, you get more tyre staying on the ground. It might increase tyre wear a little bit, but I think on this kind of focus car, it's well worth it. Now I'll just go and open the bonnet because we'll have a quick look under the bonnet before we have a look inside. A little quirk of Seat's is that the bonnet release is on the passenger side, probably to save money. And you don't get telescopic struts again to save money, which is a bit awkward when you're filming, but I'll do what I can. So there we have the very familiar EA888 engine. In this car it produces 310 horsepower, 280 pound-foot or 380 newton meters of torque. And this car being manual has got uprated engine mounts and gearbox mounts. The DSG version of this car for some reason doesn't get those. And whilst on paper it looks pretty similar to that in the R and the Club Sport S, it's actually slightly different in that the calibration means that the horsepower isn't available for as long at the rev range. It's actually a peakier engine and the torque plateau is actually slightly smaller as well. So they're giving it its own character. And yet it does do a pop on startup and in between gear changes, but it doesn't seem to pop and crackle as much as the Club Sport S, but it could just be the fact that it's got seats and I can't hear it. So just before we go in, taking all this beautiful carbon fiber, it's a little bit here as well and we've got this spoiler which is absolutely gorgeous and just like the Club Sport S you can see through it. Now as I mentioned before this is a very high spec car it's got beat sound system, folding mirrors, navigation, heated seats, adaptive cruise, auto lights uh, but, and these bucket seats are exclusive to the Cupra R. The carbon fibre theme continues in here with copper stitching and we've also got this, they call it a carbon fibre foil on the door which is really weird because it's soft but I don't mind it. Some people said it looks a bit tacky but I don't mind it. We've also got keyless entry and keyless go. A bit of a bone of contention on cars like this but uh, yeah you can always switch it off. Stainless pedals, USB port there, that's a Volkswagen Lightning lead. And I'm not sure if this is unique to this car, but we've got a start to button that glows. So it knows the key's in the car and it's just drawing your attention to it. I don't think if you've got the key, if you haven't got the key with you, it won't glow. We've got a white rev counter and a black speedo, which is quite unusual. Last time I saw that was the Audi A1 Quattro. Centre armrest. This car's got the Volkswagen Group approved tracking device from Meta which is pretty similar to the one I've just had fitted to my R8, so that's a bonus. You do need one when this car is that exclusive. Some of the plastics are a bit cheap. Glove box is a bit it's slightly damped, but it doesn't feel massively brilliant quality, to be honest, and all this is a bit hard and scratchy. But that's typical of Seat, really. So I'll just start the engine up there. Being a manual, I'll have to press clutch, press that button. And there's a bit of a cough at the exhaust, just like my Club Sport S used to do. In fact, I've been having memories of when I used to drive that because I've got the Alcantara wheel, I've got the Alcantara gear knob, just like that. I've got the manual box and I've got a car that pops out the back, which no other Volkswagen Group car I've ever driven, or definitely no other hot hatch, does that. Not even the Edition 40 that was sort of a parallel model to the Club Sport S. Now, 
a bit like Audi's, we've got the adaptive cruise all, all on this little stalk here. They don't do the Volkswagen thing of having it on here, which means the steering wheel is a little bit simpler. We also don't have the dead ahead marker of the Golf, which is no bad thing, because this is a little classier in here. We've got Drive Select, which is operated by pressing this button with a Cupra flag on it. And I think I mentioned in the earlier video, there's no normal mode, which is pretty cool. It just goes Comfort, which backs things off a bit, Sport, Cupra, and then individual where you can mix and match. You can see my settings now, which are everything in aggressive, apart from DCC and the steering. They're backed off one stage and everything else is hardcore, although ACC and air conditioning, I'm not really too fussed about. And when it's in sport mode, it revs a bit higher. It's actually sitting on a thousand RPM there. If you put it into comfort, you'll hear it go back. Just turn the aircon off a bit. Wrong one. That's it, aircon off. And there is the unique number. So 799 is double the production of the Golf GTI Club Sport S, but only a sixth of the number of the Club Sport S of these came to the UK, which makes it extremely rare. Do I prefer it to a Club Sport S? Well, actually, I'll just turn it off, which I can do with the press of a button, which I couldn't do on a Club Sport S. Um, I do. If you take the financial element out of it, I would prefer this car. If you gave me, if you had a choice of, if I could drive away with one or the other, it would most definitely be this car because it's a lot more usable and it seems pretty much on par with the Club Sport S dynamically. Um, apart from maybe, you know, the very final degree of honing which the Club Sport S benefits from, and you'd only be able to experience on track. On the road, this car is just probably one of the best cars I've ever driven. I, I don't say that lightly. Um, and I'd love to get it on track as well, and I'm sure it would perform. But you could also take it around Europe and have a great time in it, because it's a very refined, very well-equipped car. Parking sensors, navigation, phone, radar cruise, you name it. It's a superb package. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this Volks Wizard video on the very rare Seat Leon Cupra R. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please do comment because I'll try and reply to them all for the first few days at least. Please share it amongst your friends and please, please, please do subscribe because there'll be lots more great content coming soon.